Kiki. Hi, I'm here. Hi, Kiki. You didn't have to get made up for me here. You look like you're, is, are you in work attire? I am. Yeah. And I got dressed up for for your birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, I'm glad you dressed, dressed for my birthday. And I didn't. I wore a t-shirt. <laughs> so you would think I would dress for my birthday. Maybe even put a little rouge on. It would have been nice, but. But at least one of us. <laughs> at least at least one of us cares enough. All technology, technology is never... You do believe in the law of attraction? Of course. You do? Yes. Well, you can't say of course because some people don't. They don't even know what it is. And it's like manifesting things. I think that if I keep saying that I'm on the information super cul-de-sac, that I'm a, a tech phobe, then it will be that we will have more of technology issues, which I'm having right now because I'm not hearing you, except I do hear you through the phone. What I do is I just surround myself with young people <laughs> to can figure it out for me. That works. I just went in our office kitchen and I said, I am manifesting that someone is going to bring us treats to our office today. So I said, I'm putting it out there. So we'll see if some somebody brings my treats to my office today because I put it out there in the universe. But you put it in the universe and it usually comes back. Sometimes slowly, though. That's right. I don't know if you found this, Kiki, in life. We want things and we want it now. We want immediate gratification. That's, it's worse than ever now with social media. It's immediate, 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 immediate. It's like an addiction. Right. And I want to write a book because the greatest things are in life take so much time to create nature, for instance. The greatest creation ever, wouldn't you say? So... Like, but the Grand Canyon, I've been there before. It's expansive and it's beautiful. It's powerful even. And it was not, somebody didn't, you know, go, do, 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 you know, <laughs> just like it did just appear. It took all of those years to manifest. And I want to write a book called God's a Slow MFR. <laughs> right? It's like for, for the source to take over, for the big G, it's got to be slow, methodical, and whatever. Right. And you can't have the result. You don't have the results when you want them or even how you want them. How that happened in your life where, where something where you, you thought one way and it went another way? You know, somehow, what in the world? That wasn't what I asked for, but it ended up to be what you needed. Do you have any examples of that? Well, I, I mean, uh, for sure, my, my, my day job, my first job as a psychologist, um, I mean, even the process to get the degree is a bit tedious. And believe it or not, um, I know you know me a bit. So believe it or not, I had my advisor team somewhat reprimand me in grad school where they said, hey, we appreciate that you like to do things fast, 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 and you want it now. But you have to just slow down, take your time, like with my research, with my dissertation. They were like, you're going too fast and you're missing like a part of the point of the process. So I did actually, I've gotten those notes in my life that even though I like to achieve and get things accomplished, sometimes you need to slow down even to enjoy the process and also to make sure the quality on the other side is worthy of your effort. And metaphorically, you're a long distance runner. And how are you in that process? What do you think about when you're running? Are you, do you think I, I have to do something, I'm going to get there faster so I can get my chores done, my errands? Is that, what are you thinking about when you're doing the running? Is it contemplative, mindful time, or is it, I got to go do something? Well, are you asking the 48 version of me now or the version in my 20s when I did the, the longer distance running? <laughs> now, now my thoughts are, oh, my gosh, how can my knee and my hip and my back and my right foot all hurt at the same time? <laughs> no, I still – I've said for decades that um, running is my favorite form of therapy because I do find it's a chance for my – thoughts to go. I'm soaking in nature. I hate the treadmill. I like to be outside, beautiful trees, just breathing, uh, soaking in what's around me. And it is definitely um, a nice kind of meditative place for me, even though I do have more aches and pains at this stage well, in my well, life. <laughs> and, and when we're, we're in our 20s, we're not even thinking about that. Okay. It's not It's not even a concept. You hear people meditating. I remember I do. I study TM. I go, so you just sit there. I couldn't even imagine that. And you actually witnessed me at getting out of a, a flotation 
a tub. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Flo- Floasis in Atlanta. And you told me that I was a different person. And that was what? from a reflective time, which I'm not very good at. I have to be multitasking, doing something. It's even running is a multitask for me. So, yeah, uh, yeah but tell me what you saw in the difference between you were talking about your 20 year old self versus this yeah. self. What was my self before, you know, two hours before and then two hours after? Yes. I mean, we are wired similarly in that way of kind of the high energy, let's go. Uh, but yeah, I was struck. I, I mean, I told you, I blurted it out. Oh my gosh, you look younger. And you actually looked almost like a different person. Uh, I did note that you looked more like Kevin Costner in your relaxed state than, <laughs> than your frenzied state. But it was remarkable what that time in the float tank did. You looked you looked more relaxed, younger, and you were talking to me in a different way too. That was more reflective and and casual. It was it was really remarkable. Yeah, and so I'm asking you to say this because a lot of what I do is about teaching, and our teaching, I believe, is through experience. We share experiences. That's why I wanted you to share that experience that you had with me, where I was in a state of consciousness. Uh, a place where I wasn't worried about the show that was upcoming. I wasn't thinking about the shows of the past. I wasn't uh, worried about finances. There was nothing going on except being in the moment. And now we're in that moment together here. Happens to be a few people watching, waving, saying hello. And uh, by the way, happy thank you for the happy birthday wishes. But uh, we're here with Kiki. Kiki wins. Uh, is that your real last name? It sounds like something that was made up by, uh, you know, you're in some therapy program. And I, I need something affirmative. I, I can't stand my my name any, any uh, more uh, Kiki Loser. I've got to change this thing to <laughs> Kiki Wins. Yes. So, Isn't that amazing? That is my real last name. And I definitely love the upgrade when I married my husband. We've had a lot of fun with cheesy puns there and our family motto is you can't lose with wins so <laughs> it's, it's our real last name yeah i'm proud of it that is crazy so you probably sought him out just to have something I did. affirmative in your, your I life did. mr smith mr jones nope 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 <laughs> just went for the wins <laughs> that's you literally went for the wins that, that's that's great i i wonder if uh, what was your what's your maiden name clark i'm Irish, Irish, Scottish, Irish, but the Clark is from the Irish side of me. Did you know that my ex-wife's last name is Clark? Stop. And for, no. yes, and uh, oh yes, the, the 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 Clarks from Ireland. Oh, my and, gosh! Uh, so it's amazing that you and I get along so well. <laughs> Did she have an E on it or just no. C L A R K? Yeah, just a K. Oh, oh my gosh! I bet we're. Related, yikes! Well, I don't know how we go from here, Craig. I, I, <laughs> do you have any anger towards me right now? Any resentments you want to work out? <laughs> that would she be. Must have, she must have already handled all of that by the time I met you. So I should thank her. I have no, I have nothing but positivity towards. You, we, I can always thank her for my growth, because sometimes, and again, this this show is really about offering people. Um, some hope, some faith, some knowledge on how to how to deal with life as it comes at us, and uh, that and she's a great example of when I'm not in a good frame of mind, and she does one of her attacks of my character. It's a lot of projection, not a lot of self reflection or accountability is coming my way. But that I say that in a teasing way, but whatever the case is, it's not up for me to make sure that she's accountable, responsible, or any of those things. It's up for me to do the best I can do that's not going to call forth these allegations and this, this battle. And uh, what do you do to keep yourself in a space where you're inviting in from the universe, you're inviting in kindness, goodness, love, laughter, what are you doing and your process for that? Well, it's it's really hard, as I think you were sort of alluding to. It, the challenge for me is if, if I know myself and I know how I am in my family, at my office, with my staff, 
And then when I still receive back negativity or critiques or whatever, and, and I know they're not accurate, um, that's the work because it really is soul crushing if you're hearing things about yourself that you know deep down do not reflect your character or your behavior. But everyone has their own perspective, their own issues and their own baggage that they're bringing to that. So that is the challenge for me is to not get hung up on that. And it's crazy making like if, yeah. you, if you stay stuck there battling it either in your own mind or out loud or on paper or on online, um, then you just get sucked into it. And now you've got two negative people if you play that game. So taking the high road, not taking it personally and trying to um, what's the thing that um, uh, Michelle Obama says about uh, the haters. Um, somebody haters, hopefully will write it in ha here. Haters gonna hate. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not a big quoter. I like to come up with my own quotes. Yeah, I've never uh, been a big quoter. So like studying the. Hopefully somebody puts it in here. But yeah, just rising above and trying to not let it crush you. She says something about they go low, you go high. I think. Yes. Is that it? I yeah. do remember that quote. It's not something Yay, similar. Thank you. It, it's uh, it's something I actually battled with, and so do you. Same. You know, there's a little bit of us, and uh, you know, we're both healers, yep. and we help people heal, but we have to heal ourselves first. Right. And to thine own self be true. There's a quote. Yeah, look at, look at us. Look at us. It's something that uh, is my battle, and what I've found, Kiki. I don't know if you agree with me. Is when the children are watching, that's what's great about having children. I'm not recommending children to anyone. Um, matter of fact, you might want... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I just love these little reflections of us. When I was doing battle with Clark, uh, it was tough. A lot of defense, and sometimes you're literally forced to defend because it has to go to court. And that's really tough. Now you're like, your life is on the line. you got to explain to the judge, no, in, in, in literally 30 seconds, no, I'm a really good guy. Here's all the things I've done. No. It's, and then you have a lawyer speaking for you. You're not even allowed to talk. Right. Talk about the most difficult situation. And this is what I've learned because I have a couple of the sons, a couple of my kids, Two of, them, two of them, it's ridiculous how easy it is. I mean, they just appreciate me, and it's like it's, it's a full-on love fest all the time with them. The other two who got kind of programmed, like this is a bad guy, they got to see the bad guy. You know what the bad guy did? I defended. And a kid yeah. does not know offense from defense. They don't care about your justifications. They don't care about your rationalizations, your reasons for defense. They don't care. They only know you're attacking their mother, even if it's something like, hey, can you stop doing this? Whatever it is, that's the rock and the hard place that I find in life. How about you? A hundred percent. Well, um, you know, I know that world from my work, that's one of the specialties of our private practice is helping families going through the high conflict divorce situations. And you hit the nail on the head. The kids don't know when they hear you saying something about the other parent, not only does it affect how they think about you, but it affects how they think about themselves because they're walking around half mommy, half daddy. So if you're dinging the other parent, they're feeling that in their soul and their self-esteem. So um, it takes some some families and parents a long time to realize that, but I'm glad, I'm glad you've had that revelation because you still have um, your younger kids for sure that you can you can forge this path differently. Yeah, it's true. But if I have to keep uh, mindful of my words, I'd call it, you know, there's a sacred pause. There's a, a spiritus is a Latin word for breath. And uh, again, if people are looking for tips of life or that's what this is about, it's not just about me being a comedian. Kiki's a comedian, just open for me this weekend. We'll get to that. Yeah. But if you can gain some wisdom, some shared wisdom, so if you can gain some knowledge and some other ways to approach situations which sometimes are absolutely puzzling, baffling. You're, you just, what in the hell am I going to do? Now I just see my energy. What am I going to do? <laughs> you know, not a lot good is going to come out with, what am I going to do? I get, uh, my fists are up. Oh, my, yeah. I'm going to defend myself. Oh, but like the lion, put them up. Oh. <laughs> 
And what's funny about the line, I always bring the Wizard of Oz up. Uh, underneath, I don't know if you remember this. Oh, I'm the king of the forest. <laughs> it's bravado that we're putting out there. We want people to be to be afraid of us and intimidate. Oh, oh, I'll rip you. I'll rip you. My head. <laughs> and then underneath, he ends up going, I'm just a dandelion. <laughs> which we never get away with today he literally does the the, the hand i'm just the dandelion oh i don't know if you ever noticed it yeah but <laughs> underneath we are dandelions we are vulnerable we even though you're a parent we don't have it all together and the kids are looking for us to have it together and we don't so one of my things is and i want to hear what yours i do a sacred pause i breathe I call it spiritus. It's a Latin word for breath. Huh. If you breathe in, if you breathe in the presence of this higher source that's within us and connect to that, it only takes a second. But when we're not in our breath, when we're in our anxiousness, we're not in breath. It's not deep breath. And we're gonna re- we're gonna react. It's a reaction. And and the kids see the reaction, everybody else, and then there's a and then there's a nuclear reaction. It's dominoes. So what do you do? to stop yourself from taking that old behavior road, which we all do. Yes. Well, I love the breathing too. And, um, you know, I took your, the healing with humor class and you would have us breathe at the beginning of that really good deep breaths. And I think even that group experience, it's, it's unbelievable every time you're with other people, just even doing deep breathing together because after three or four you feel your entire system has reset and it's remarkable when i do it with the client in my office and i'm teaching them but i'm doing it with them and every time i'm like oh my gosh i feel so great now don't you so can't say enough about breathing and um i also try to start my day with um prayer um devotionals and even before i go on stage I'm sending up a quick prayer, which I find helps my system just kind of settle and get into a good sweet spot to go and connect with the crowd. So breathing, prayer, and then we already talked about getting outside in nature for me is yeah. imperative to get my daily time, even if I'm not running, just to get outside and get sun on my face. There's so much research behind how healing that is for our mental health and our medical uh, body health. And the one thing that really initiates it, like a like an ignition, remember the old cars? Now you just walk in and it starts. Yep. I don't even know if it's on. Seriously, like, I'm my car. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I remember literally, I go, hey, can you push me? And I have to push it to pop the clutch. Yep. I have no idea what a clutch is. And, it was, and then <laughs> flooding the tank and all that. They, they do not ever, they will never have that experience this generation. So sad. Yeah. But what I want to say, the ignition is, for me, what we do in class, and uh, well, amazing class last night. I always have them write down one to ten your stress level, and at the end of the class, always drops at least four points because we're laughing. We're literally volunteering to laugh. And there's the breath. There is the breath, the connection with your big G, with your force, with your source. And that's the most amazing discovery that I've ever had is I love making people laugh, but I can never define it on what it was. And that energy shift that everybody has, and you've had the magnificence of having that. You're not only a therapist, but you're a stand-up comedian. And, and tell everybody what that, how that feeds your soul, what happens to you in those moments where you're soliciting these laughs from people. It's crazy, isn't it? It's a crazy profession. It is, it's crazy. And I mean, my entire life, I'd love to be the one at the party or or in a staff meeting or even in a session. I'd love to be the one to get the laugh, but to experience that, yeah, from the stage and have an entire audience full of people that are understanding what you're saying and it hits, it strikes a chord with them and they're having an involuntary reaction of laughter coming out. It's the most exhilarating feeling. I mean, and I know you talk about how laughter helps people live longer, but I'm a believer how good that is for your health too, because that feeling, I can see why people can get possibly even like addicted to performing because then you just like want that next high of having a room full of people 
all connected together in something so beautiful and so positive. Yeah, and and you're now getting to experience it on a stage. Somebody asked the question. This isn't my question. Somebody asked, um, how, how long have you wanted to be both a psychologist or a therapist <laughs> and a comedian at the same time? Did you? When did that vision start? It's such a new thing. I think one of our um, super fans we met in Atlanta this weekend just gave me the nod um, where he um, pointed out that I'm new to comedy. So, yeah, I only did my first open mic last summer, July 2022, on a little bit of a dare um, from wow. my best friend and her husband that were really close with my husband and I. And they dared me. And it was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. And I'm a thrill seeker, an adventure seeker. I've never been more scared, but I did it um, on the dare. And also, I would started to get into comedy, taking my own advice to my clients post-COVID, um, where I was a mess. I was stressed, anxious, burnt out. And I knew I had to do something different as a creative outlet to feed my soul. So I took a couple improv classes and I was like that's fun but not exactly for me so then I did that um, fateful open mic last summer and after three open mics the club invited me to actually be in a show which I hear is somewhat unusual <laughs> after three open mics to get a paid gig and then I've been riding that crazy roller coaster I, 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 and fate would have it I happen to be in town also I don't know if you know this I never ever would stay no and watch way. a show and somehow i did i think it's because you guys came on after i had already finished my show yes. and then the, and then the open mic night happened and i will just reflect back to you my memory on that was a year ago was you have a spark in you and i've seen this spark in other people i was just with dave Chappelle last week and he opened for me he was 15 i saw the spark um are you taking this in like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm with Dave Chappelle yes. now. <laughs> it's you crazy. It's the same, the same sentence. Whitney Cummings used to open for me. I saw it in her. She actually opened for me in Detroit where I'm going this weekend, tomorrow. Uh, and it is something that's just different. You can see it in people. And I will define it for everyone out there. You don't have to be a stand-up comedian to bring this humor to people. You don't have okay. to do this professionally. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't even lead to something that's going to be good for your soul. It could lead to more panic and frustration and fear. So it's not it's not usually the the, the greatest route even. I mean, to take the route of stand-up comedy. But bringing your humor and your unique humor to people, one-on-one -on -one or one-on-one -on -one thousand or one-on-one, -on -one, I've done up to 70,000 at once. When you can bring that to people, that is where absolute reflection of bliss comes in. If that it's a connection like no other. And I'm talking about one-on-one, -on -one, you and your clients. Have you had experience with your clients where you're in there laughing? Have you had experience with your clients where you're just going, oh, my God, this is so much fun, adding fun to your therapy? Uh, yes. I mean, that's what sometimes people are surprised to hear that I've even been laughing with clients that are in a very serious place with their mental health, their having severe depression, battling suicidal thoughts, PTSD. And even with those clients, especially ones where we work together for a while, it's amazing how we can still pull laughing and joking into a session because, I mean, that's part of what I'm passionate about merging these two worlds is when, when life happens and you're in a tough spot, yes, we need time to grieve and cry sometimes and just, sit around and and feel sorry for ourselves but at a certain point you have to be able to pivot and spin that and say well is there is there humor in this is there something i can make fun of myself is there some higher purpose i can get out of this experience and that's when the magic happens in a therapy session too is if we can find that higher purpose or even find a humorous angle to laugh at and sort of take some of that pressure off and then still keep doing the powerful work. That's right. And that is what comedians do. We are embracing the pain, embracing the suffering, or, or actually suffering is a choice. So we're making a choice to use another different alchemy on this and, and shift, shift the consciousness over to this. It's an amazing frequency that happens when you're laughing.
And what happens is our heads get in the way because we, I'm not supposed to be laughing at this right. because of all the conditioning we have. Yeah. Oh, you're not supposed to. No, can't take it serious. Well, got to be serious. Serious always means dour. It means let's get more depressed. Isn't that amazing? Let's get more depressed. Let's get more down and dark and get even more angry and frustrated and filled with resentment over even how they died or whatever it is. Let's No, why not release that? Which most people who die, for instance, they would want that for you. They would want a funeral, not a funeral. <laughs> We're here having fun, making fun of them. I mean, this is what this is such a misnomer in life that we've just it's mindlessly accepted that that's the way to deal with tragedy. That's the way we deal with crisis. Is you cannot laugh at it. You know what? Give yourself permission. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can laugh. You're not laughing at it. You're laughing at your perception of it. You're laughing at your perception of life. You're laughing at something to do with you. And something self-deprecating, hum- filled with humility, whatever it is, we're finding those moments. Kiki, have you ever gone to a funeral and laughed by accident? Like you, it, because you're, it is that people shame you for doing that. Have you ever had that happen where you're doing, oh my god, I can't control myself? I don't think I'm on accident, <laughs> but maybe if they are on purpose telling funny stories, you know, sometimes I like it when they do that, where it really is the celebration. That's true. When you tell celebration, of, I love celebrations of life much more than the funeral where you have to make it look like, yeah, I remember that. And you have to say the same. Here's another thing. You can condition with the same thing, same responses. Sorry for your loss. You know, rest in peace. All that kind of stuff. Try, oh my God. I like to be original. I don't want this. So I remember seeing one of my first funerals was my grandfather and they, and they use these terms. They go, oh, in the, in the casket. They have an open casket, which it makes no sense to me. It's not even them. You might as well just put like a mannequin, and they and they say, "Oh, he looks so natural," and I'm going natural. Uh, that looks nothing. My my grandfather, I knew him in a a wife beater t shirt that he cut lawns with his Toro lawnmower and was filled with grass clippings, and he was a like a gruff guy, and 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 I swear I saw his lips move. Get this rouge off of me. <laughs> so it's like, it's not natural. It's not natural, but we make it natural. What's natural to me is an expression of laughter to really have a release. It's a release. And have you had awkward moments in your life, Kiki, where you just go, I shouldn't be laughing right now? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I think um, you have a, a story you told in our class about laughing in a funeral where you're doing that like silent convulsing in the pew. Um, And, you know, I'm one of three girls. Um, You've heard a good bit about my twin sister, who I think is is watching us today. But when you have a a twin sister and a younger sister and the three of you are in church or some something else, uh, some important thing, then inevitably we've gotten ourselves cracked up when we're not supposed to. And it's that silent laughter where everybody's just, whoo! Sorry, I got I got shaken. There. Everybody's shoulders are are shaking, and you're like, yeah, covering your your mouth. That's like the worst feeling and the best feeling all it, at once. It's that it's that on the precipice of explosion. I was at a wedding, actually, North Carolina, and this comedian. Oh. He was he was in the wedding. He's short and I'm tall, so he was in the front and I was in the back. And it was a really strict, like, Baptist wedding. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, every, they had a wedding. The wedding planner was going, you know, uh, <laughs> she's, like, telling us where to go. with her. And we're two goofballs from Philly and New York. We, we escorted the people because you know, we're in the party. Uh, so we yeah. escort them to their seats. We go, dinner for two. And, you know, like, like the esc- and people are, like, uh, the, we were so irreverent. But he said something or I said something, made each other laugh. And then we had to go be in front of the people while we're still thinking about this thing that happened. So I see his shoulders. You know, it's that shoulders yeah. thing when they start flickering. Exactly. And then and then and then and I start going and he hears me all the way in the front, he hears me go mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to hold it in. <laughs> so he hears mm-hmm. And then he goes, uh, and so we're like s- signaling like animals. <laughs> and then they're going, and we are gathered here together in this real reverent this place. And she comes crawling up, like almost on her knees, the, the, the wedding planner. I'm going to have to ask you boys to leave. Oh, <laughs> so, no. 
<laughs> it was one of the funniest days of my life. I had so much fun being irreverent. And I think that we should go more for the irreverence, more for the, the, you know, the, 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 the people that are disruptors. I think disruption is a wonderful thing, not to be in line with everybody else. Do you coach when you teach? Do you teach anything like that? Do you, what, what, is, what is your um, modality, if you will, when you're, when, if I'm meeting with you and I've got a lot of baggage? <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah, this is hypothetical, right? <laughs> no, no, I do. <laughs> and you know half of it. <laughs> so if I come to you, what is your modality? What's your process when you bring people through something like, um, let's say I'm dealing with a clerk? <laughs> So, which, the, the other day she had an excuse to email me and it was been it's been a couple of years which is awesome I got to clean that out and, you know and she just had this excuse to join in on attacking me you've always been like this it was like oh here we go don't respond just be loving but yeah. I do have those anxious moments where I want to defend and things like that and it's you know there are people out there they're going to come after you yeah, you know, they don't like your joy. They're going to try to diminish your right. joy. Well, how do you deal with that? What do you teach? Yeah, I have a few different approaches I I use, and I'm definitely solution focused, which means I'm not the kind of psychologist that just sits there and says, "Tell me more." With like a nice smile on my face, I really want to have like an active dialogue about solutions and what can we do, um, but. I do tend to direct people towards focusing on what they can control. It's kind of like what we were talking about earlier with the haters. I think a lot of times in life, we're getting ourselves really upset and anxious and stressed about the what ifs, what might happen, or things that people are doing um, that bother us. But most of that we can't control and we can't predict the future really. So I think it's a helpful mindset to really just focus on what can you control? You can control taking care of yourself. You can control sharing love and kindness to others and what you put out into the world. Um, and then not sweating the what ifs because I like to make up statistics. So I'll just say, I think the stat is like 80% that most of what people, 80% of what people worry about never actually happens yeah. so it's probably true if you think about that like oh my gosh what if this most of it never it's, happens yeah. so let's yeah. stop that cycle of thinking yeah. about the what if and just focus it's, here our, it's our self-obsession i i would bring the percentage much higher it's probably 98 yeah. percent let's it's say just, that then i'm making you know, it some, anyway there's a woman byron katie who has a process where you you start with is it true and the answer is very rarely very rarely is it true is it a fact or is it emotion and feelings aren't facts. That's right. It's just a feeling. And uh, when I'm dealing with private clients or coaching, I can see it in someone how they're taking it so personal. And they make it true no matter what. Last night our session was about, a lot of it was about a person who shared. And he's there, I'm an asshole. I said, where's that come from? And he, my wife. And I'm like, really? Well, that's a perception. He's, no, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> it, it's a perception. You've joined in. And it's, uh, it's almost like a collusion that takes place. Like, oh, I'm going to believe you. I'm going to deify you to dictate how I feel about myself. This is why I think it's so important, Kiki. I hope you maybe, maybe you'll agree with me, maybe, maybe not, is to be individuals and not followers. Because the followers, what you're, if you're in a follower mentality and you're not resetting to your own standards, what's going to happen is they're going to dictate how you feel about yourself. And it's very rarely going to be good right. uh, unless right. you're, a, you know, up with people. <laughs> Woo, yeah, I mean, rarely because their job to keep you wanting them and needing them, it's like a battery. They have a, they have a battery they can make that's everlasting, but you can't sell more batteries. It's the same thing as we can have this beautiful life that has answers and has joy and bliss, but, they don't want you to believe that you possess that power within you. It has to be somebody else's power. Yeah, and there's so much pressure to conform yeah. to a certain model of what people think. I definitely have found that in, you know, I'm, I'm the boss at my practice and being a female boss who's naturally, I'm naturally wired to be bubbly and laughy and friendly. And much of my career, I've felt the pressure to conform 
because I feel like I don't get the respect sometimes from um, from my staff that a man might, um, and I feel this pressure, well, gosh, should I give up who I am and be serious and come in barking orders? But that's not me. Um, even in the comedy world, um, I'm a minority. There's a lot of men out there. Um, and, you know, sometimes there's pressure to be like somebody else or to bring material in that you see everyone else doing. And I feel like in both scenarios, um, I've had to sort of fight to be true to myself and who I am and who God made me to be. And people can take it or leave it. But if I if I yeah. conformed, yeah. it wouldn't resonate with if you, people. If you, if, you conf- if you conformed, you never would have had the opportunity to open for me in Atlanta. If you were one of the – because we, you stood out. I mean, there are probably people that got more laughs the night that I saw the, uh, the, the open mic night at, in Raleigh. But a, you – it was a paid. It was my first paid show. You were there for my first ever. Paid I didn't realize there was yeah. pay that night. Yeah. But, I, but you were you were one of many people on the stage after my show. You yeah. all came on, yeah, yeah. and I still remember you sharing something that was completely unique to you that made me laugh. No, ch- no joke. The fishing pole phobia. You're afraid of going down the beach and having fishing line uh, c- uh, sever your head. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me laugh and the, the visual of that got you a job a year later at opening for me your first road gig for, for a whole weekend yes. i know you opened for me in charlotte yes and that's what happened and so i want to encourage everybody listen to this that's the story here everything's about a story yes. it's not about our opinions the story is i see the uniqueness i feel the instinct and the urge that this person has something special to offer to the world, not necessarily conforming or not going along the lines of everyone at the lines, no pun intended. She had a fishing line <laughs> caught on her throat. And, um, but anyway, our time is, uh, is up here. I want to um, mention you do have wins family psychology, which yeah. is really cool. And you have a, a book out, a parenting handbook. I have it somewhere around here. See my mug? Yeah, I sent you one. The No Wimpy Parenting Handbook. And here's my No Wimpy Parenting mug to do subtle <laughs> advertising this whole time. Yeah. By the way, just so you know, when you put it up there, it's completely backwards. So unless I'm dyslexic, <laughs> I could not read that logo. <laughs> so. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> so, um, and thank you, everybody, for the generosity. I see I see a badge. If they buy a badge, that means there's some money coming in. I want I want you to know that that's going to go to Stanley Ullman. He's a comedian who's not he's his health has prevented him. He cannot work, and we do not have a support system in this business. That's why Kiki keep the day job. <laughs> keep the day job. You don't want to be a stand up comedian. We have no support. It's it's really sad the way people would rather take down comedians, you know, the Karens out there. Although somebody here says we should call them Clarks from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dad's not going to like that. I think he might be watching too. He would, he would feel pained at our family's name being, <laughs> being used in that way. <laughs> I got, I got Clarked. <laughs> he Clarked me. Uh, I've had quite experience with the Clark family. And, uh, one thing you can say about the Irish, uh, very, very, um, when they get a resentment, uh, they'll, they'll they'll take you down, and and they'll do it together. <laughs> oh <laughs> they, God! Nothing nothing like unifying with anger and resentment. But uh, whew, uh, never n- never met a grudge they couldn't avoid. <laughs> so oh, wow! Uh, yeah, some <laughs> people are that way. But but that's but we are here to teach the opposite, and how to deal with that. those people are going to be out there, Karens and Clarks and Carls, whatever. They're going to be out there firing away, and it's up for us to. Gently move to the side, move to the side, and bring our own uniqueness. That's what you brought us today and this weekend and on your stage and in your therapy practice. I would go to you. if I, I will be there in North Carolina, by the way, performing at the Raleigh Improv. You're going to be on the show December yeah. 21st to the 23rd. Uh, get your tickets and uh, whatever, all that oh, stuff. Yes. And, and can we also do a shout-out um, – for people to follow my Instagram, because at the end of every show, I try to ask for followers because I'm competing with my 20 year old who might also be watching this. Um, Zoe, um, she's a social media superstar and she's stomping me. So follow Kiki's Comedy Club. You can also see details about my upcoming show with with Craig. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Follow us. Uh, as a matter of fact, 
I'm in a competition too against myself because I have not been able to rise above 59,000 uh, for seven months. <laughs> I cannot what? make it go. It hovers under there. It goes down a little. It's like yes. 59.3, oh. 0.4. I think I might have made it to point seven. I just can't get over that. I want to see that 60 on there. So there's a campaign you can get behind, everybody. There's something <laughs> There's something to strive for is to help Craig get more. But, but for my birthday today, I ask you go to laughterhills.org and put a little something in there, and it goes right to Stanley Ullman. The guy literally is having a hard time eating. He can't have food in his refrigerator, and that's what the money will go to. So anybody that chipped in here, I appreciate it. And um, – it, it's a Kiki's Comedy Club, not Tiki. It's not a Tiki Hut, okay? I think I read Tiki's. <laughs> K-I-K-I-S. <laughs> and I have another podcast coming up today. What Don't I? At what time is that? 12 o'clock on Pacific Time, and that's on Instagram. So if you if you want more of me, you're not going to have any more Kiki, unless you contact her personally. Unless maybe. I <laughs> so. crash. I can crash that podcast. Yeah, why don't you do that? Why don't you crash that podcast? Uh, I, have, I have a great uh, a great guest coming up on there. We have great guys. Paul Hoffman, who's a transformational leader. He actually, listen to this. Here's a little tease for you. He's the songwriter for the following jingle. Have you driven a Ford lately? No way. <laughs> swear to God. I swear to God. I swear Gosh. to God. He's done a lot of jingles, but that's the one that every one of us knows that. Have that you driven a Ford me. lately? Wow. I, I, can't, I can't even get it out of my mind. But I can't get I can't get uh, your fishing line out of my mind either. But thank you so much, Kiki, for joining us. Follow Kiki and um, hey, listen, everybody, listen to your own sense of self. Whatever's on going on in there, the you know the haters gonna hate. You know the negative's gonna be negative. The darkness is gonna be there. We're our own Jedi's, okay? And go with the light. You don't want to be Darth Vader and have your last breath be finally finding love. Love is there. We love you. Laughter loves you. Go get plenty of it. CraigShoemaker.com, by the way, and I'll see you the next time. All right, take laughter seriously. Ha, 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 ha. Happy birthday. Thank, thank you, Kiki. I appreciate it. All right, we can go off now. See, my arms aren't long enough like yours. 